just two minutes uh, okay so good morning women and all and i welcome to this uh, 125th of webinar i am amit marketing and communication manager at mane cia mane cia is running this unique saturday webinar series since from the last two and a half years for the budding entrepreneurs and the agripreneurs mane cia is one of the leading agribusiness incubator in india which is hosted by the national institute of agriculture extension management manage hyderabad so still the date our incubator has mentor for uh, 503 uh, entrepreneurs and incubated more than 330 startups from various focus areas in the agri and allied sectors as the today's topic webinar is value chain development by the startups uh, in the aquaculture sector yes and it is not surprised that the startups have shown interest in the developing efficient and sustainable value chain since in the agriculture and the aquaculture <laughs> sector this is growing and uh, uh, the many opportunities in this sector are attracting to the many startups so to discuss this uh, very interesting topic we have joined with us two eminent speakers i welcome the both speakers and we will start uh, the session uh, with mr artheya so mr artheya he is the founder of aqua bio solutions private limited he has more than 30 years of exp uh, experience in the r&d product validation and procurement of the aquaculture he worked in the various fish and farm hatchery uh, centers so i welcome uh, sir and request to start with your session yeah so uh, hello yeah mr athey are you there am i audible to you sir uh, you are clear and uh, loud yeah yeah sir well loaded presentation for our end you can start now okay so um, uh, today we are discussing about one of the vital uh, topic uh, which falls into aquaculture and uh, allied uh, aspects of it we are into uh, i would uh, like to give a brief introduction about uh, my company so we are into product development product trials formulation and consulting so further to this uh, value chain development in aquaculture i mean aquaculture is a huge topic to cover but uh, in aquaculture there are so many sub segments which needs uh, uh, attention so and some of them i am going to list so on the way so you could uh, start making your own uh, notes or probably uh, see how best one can or you know derive a business out of all these sub segments so i am uh, also joined with my uh, co-founder here so we have a company which manages uh, uh, the product development and uh, uh, you know product trials and other formulation related uh, queries and of the aqua Hello. Yeah, I mean, uh, I... so एक बार डूब गया. So डूबने के लिए पानी तो चाहिए. So this we are today we are talking about a business which is actually. Uh, making a business out of water so in water we i mean uh, one third of the entire land mass is uh, land and the rest is water all of us know so there are so many value chains uh, uh, in in aquaculture uh, segment uh, and it is huge and large by its own so for example i am i am just you know adding down those those uh, examples here number one is uh, fish uh, feed ingredients and there are so many companies which are involved in uh, all these uh, corn soya bean meal bone uh, bone meal and uh, ddgs likewise so these are all the ingredients which which goes into the feed manufacturing so there are a lot of uh, feed manufacturing companies they need the help of all vendor support so you could think of uh, developing a business uh, on your own on in all these value uh, chains so that is the main motto of today's uh, presentation and uh, uh, 
uh, supplement is again a huge segment by its own and wherein uh, there are a lot of probiotics, prebiotics, immunostimulants and uh, extracts. So those will come into picture and th this will help nourish the supporting, I mean, culture system or fish. So to do that, there, there is a need of again a service segment which Uh, you know, mostly relay will be uh, they, they have all the reset and they know the uh, what each ingredients brings into the, the, the on the table and they make a feed out of it to get each species different. So, and, you know, it, it is, I'm just going to give you a preliminary or maybe a cream level of the entire segment so these are all the big big segments by its own but uh, they have uh, been uh, in with all these different segments and all these value chains are togetherly called as aquaculture value chain so uh, feed also need a feed premix enzymes and su such as those and even if you ask me uh, in uh, and if we go back 30 years down the line, there were hardly any inputs going into the water. But in today's modernized aquaculture, so there are a lot of inputs which gives value to the uh, water as well in order to replenish that, in order to you know, better the quality of the water or in order to correct the pH or in order to settle some of the suspended particles. If I mention pack here, that is polyaluminum chloride, which is used in the aquaculture system in order to settle the suspended solids and uh, carbonates and bicarbonates as we know this will give uh, uh, this will value value add to the water by increasing its alkalinity likewise lime and dolomite has its own uh, you know mechanism of action in the water so likewise we need to understand so the, in in all this sub, sub segment one can derive a business out of it making a uh, uh, and 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 stabilizers meaning uh, there will be toxic components which are being produced because of the wastage which gets accumulated in the bottom layer of the water, which is mostly from the uh, fecal matter of the fish or shrimp or from the uneaten feed wastage. So, so for that as well, there is separate products, product line or value segment which, can, which one entrepreneur can decide upon and venture into that. And... Uh, uh, why feed is there? Why uh, you know supplement is there? It is there in order to support the entire value system. And such being the case, hatchery, nursery, farming operation, and all these equipments all together, we call it as the aquaculture uh, domain. So maybe maybe go to the next slide, please. Yeah, here here I'm elaborating the again a sub segment of aquaculture, which is the mother segment I would call. So hatchery would be the mother segment of aquaculture, which where the broodstocks are there, and in in uh, via the broodstock we will be deriving uh, the young ones, which which we call in the initial stage egg, and also you know spawn and fingerling and such uh, being the terminologies in fish culture. Whereas in uh, shrimp culture or uh, prawn culture it differs. So there you have again a broodstock. Again, uh, larval uh, LRT we call or larval rearing, uh, rearing tanks, where the operation is generally between 30 to 45 days. Once it is, uh, uh, you know, uh, the maturation and breeding starts, and the LRT cycle will be mostly to it varies between 10 to 15 days. So here again, that that is again a different value chain. So if one want to start the hatchery, so what are the things they need to do? It's a, it's a separate subject by its own and it needs at least one to, one to two hour of elaboration. And uh, I'm not exaggerating, but uh, you may get into some sort of training uh, in a hatchery and go there and learn that practical things are 90% in, in, in it. And whatever we are telling here is only 5 to 10% of the entire uh, business. So again, uh, broodstock adult uh, maintenance is it's it's a separate subject by its own. It's a segment by its own if it is done properly. And uh, there, there you have uh, to give a nourishment which is better for the broodstock, which needs more protein. 
intake which needs more care in terms of because they need to be able to breed continuously on and on so and there is another segment which is a nursery which is picking up uh, actually in the in the in the uh, fish segment it is uh, widely accepted and uh, it is widely known to people that uh, in andhra pradesh if you especially if you see in andhra pradesh so there is again a separate community which grows from fingerling stage to i, I hope you you know the terminology of fry and fingerling so fingerling uh, stage to around 150 to 250 200 or 250 gram size and uh, there are separate localities in andhra pradesh uh, such as uh, kaikluru and eluru uh, which does this i mean they grow fish from uh, maybe uh, one or two centimeter until it it reaches 100 to 200 gram size so this uh, this is again picking up in uh, you know semi bioflock or bioflock or maybe normal culture practice in shrimp culture as well so that is a very new developing developing segment and there are less players in it so it has got a lot of value if it is done properly where if you see the vietnamese culture practice indonesian culture practice or thailand or taiwan practice there are lot many companies not individuals i'm saying companies are getting into uh, you know uh, new segments such as uh, post larvae development in, into they, they grow here until 25 to 30 or 45 days maximum but again after they grow the the, the surrounding farming area has to be in the very vicinity because when rostrum is grown you cannot transport that to pl i mean post larvae to the very uh, long distance so again farming uh, will be the next part of it but uh, in in indian scenario mostly 95 to 98 percent is without uh, this nursery concept but they just go get into farming they where they feed their young ones or younglings or pl for 0 to 30 days blind feeding we, we call it blind feeding because we will not know we stock the pl inside and we <coughs> expect it to grow until 30 days until it becomes clear and visible uh, by its body mass so then starts the actual culture after 30 days if nothing is a problem in it no ehp no wssb no no other disease syndrome then we go ahead because again 60 percent of the entire value this sub value chain is only feed so feed will consume the entire uh, you know money of the uh, produce so that is why the reason so uh, we get into this very cautiously uh, that meticulous planning is needed and every time the health health checks water checks has to be done in pretty much in advance and uh, parallelly also we need to do so here again if you want to start another business if you are very keen and you are located in in, in a farming area and if you want to do another uh, sub segment if you want to explore uh, as a business sense then probably plumbing and polylining aerators blower fish feeding and harvesting equipments trading and all these are manufacturing so this will become a entire different value chain again so again harvesting and pre-harvesting is again uh, you know not looked very seriously but i would also say this is again a huge part of the business where at least 15 percent to 20 percent of the entire labor uh are involved in this and uh, transportation is involved in this icing equipment netting material so this is again a, this is all preliminary <clears throat> uh you know ideology what i am giving so again if you meticulously plan every uh, thing in in this sub segment has got at least few months to learn from all this sub segment again uh, today as we are talking about aquaculture value chain i'm not going to touch upon the processing part of it because it is again a huge 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 segment by its own it is a very big segment so we are not touching the fish and uh, shellfish processing today so can we go to the next slide please uh, one slide previous i think could you go to the previous slide yeah so here also i forgot to mention that yeah here in uh, there are several st stages in in uh, shrimp where nopli has got six stages zuya has got third three stages and mysis has got three stages so, so this is also vital and important you need to know all these vitalities before you venture into the business and uh, 
how the conversion happens at what timing it happens what are the feed you need to give and i have forgot to mention one more segment uh, which coming up in uh, southeast asian countries especially which is uh, uh, you know fish food organism culture such as uh, uh, it can be uh, sandworm it can be annelida or it can be even clams mollusks for in order to feed the brood stock and also to uh, uh, you know algal culture such as uh, uh, you know mostly we feed uh, 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 diatoms here so nanochloropsis uh, and uh, 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 this thing uh, uh, you know that there are different uh, sets of algal culture we need to maintain uh, thalo thalassocera is uh, recently ketoceras we used to do now thalassocera has taken the place of ketoceras so that uh, culture practice uh, is done so that again it, it's a uh, huge segment by its own and uh, uh, supplementation of these larvas also with the artemia that that is again a so few companies from abroad have ventured into india and they are doing it now in um, predominantly in andhra pradesh because 70 more than 70 percent of shrimp culture now exists in only one state um, uh, and now other states also uh, picking up that so could we go to the next slide please so this is again challenges and uh, uh, in the value chain so there is again uh, if i need to explain uh, uh, in any business there will be challenges it's not only in aquaculture it's not only in agriculture so initial investment in any livestock or animal allied uh, businesses will be having higher investment cost it would be poultry it would be cattle you will not realize the uh, you know milk will be 30 rupees or 25 to 30 rupees per liter but you need to spend 30 to 40000 for a livestock so such the case so in in fisheries also or in aquaculture also you your investment uh, which gets into the size of the amount which you can invest in this where you can uh, uh, the receivables are quite quantifiable or not uh, simply a small half acre or one lacre if you want to venture into this commercially i want to get profit means there is a minimum slot size in every, every business likewise in aquaculture also if you do certain acres then the business will be viable so because you have to take out the costing of your labors feed supplements and medicines and uh, water stabilizers all, all those what i have told you and the operational cost is again a separate thing and uh, the, the 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 recurring cost and fixed cost is uh, you have to calculate that before venturing to venturing into this so so there is a again a fish seed shortage in uh, not only except uh, iap uh, karnataka orissa and west bengal in, even in other states also uh, it is in deficit and uh, these states are a little bit better but there is again a deficit here because the culture area is somewhere else and the, the, person who wanting to culture this is sitting somewhere else so the easily available or distribution network is not that much uh, established here so this is again a little problem again inputs uh, unavailability of brood banks or local hatchery nursery and even inputs even in if somebody wants to culture the uh, of you know the shrimp or fish in uh, karnataka or in tamil nadu or in kerala there is, there is hardly a number of feed factories or facilities exist so they have to at least order one truckload of feed and they have to keep it whether it does not need means there is what is the use of keeping the one load or you know 14 tons or 17 tons or 20 tons lorry so such is the case and today's uh, transportation cost is also at least uh, it will come to three to four rupees per kg so we have to calculate all that before venturing into the business so again feed feed supplements input and processing plant unavailability see in in the recent example excellent example is haryana and punjab they ventured into aquaculture segment they have grown wonderful uh, you know they got uh, without any pathogen problem they they grown uh, the uh, you know uh, shrimps but uh, there is hardly any processing plants nearby so all the way from punjab or haryana they have to send it back to either orissa or to gujarat or to andhra pradesh again so again growing there and uh, there is unavailability of processing plant and sending all the stocks here this will become a, another uh, added cost to your uh, cost of production 
so here again raising fuel price is equal to again raising the logistic cost so the, again what i have just explained so for feed again you need to bring it in lorry again after harvest it has to go back in lorry and for bringing even the uh, you know young ones or pls you need to uh, take it either via flight or uh, through road transport it is very long distance so it is only advisable uh, via that so so that is again a thing and uh, uh local production it is there is a big mismatch or unmatch between this uh, uh, local preference facility, uh, facility so if you see uh, hilsa elisha in west bengal or in uh, tripura they are not liked as much in uh, uh, delhi or in karnataka or, or probably in uh, tamil nadu or not in kerala <laughs> so they don't prefer to eat hilsa elisha by giving 2000 rupees per kg but in it is a delicacy in west bengal but uh, likewise uh, this curry you know, uh, in uh, kerala uh, such being the uh, they they fetch good price in uh, that is atropus uh, canarensis so that will uh, that is the scientific name of that fish so that will fetch good value in kerala but if you bring that to punjab or or west bengal so the, it will not have its value likewise in chenna in telangana uh, this uh, pandugappa and also uh, uh channa Ch marulis uh, snake heads are given at most importance they have local significance and people like that so regionally we have different uh, tastes we have different uh, wantings they we have a different sort of uh, expectation and uh, uh, this thing so in order to match that uh, there, there is a you know mismatch so that is again a challenge so lack of again uh, mr Adria, can you uh, wind up in uh, next uh, two minutes yeah sure no problem yeah so this is again a lack of competitive market again a lack of awareness again fish is good for health but uh, it is not uh, so much marketed uh, and uh, you know publicity is very less uh, so that's being the case uh, you know uh, marketing has become a hurdle uh, and availability also would you go to the next uh, and probably uh, one slide after this so we have to find a business proposition between problem statement and that is the unmet need we have to find that gap and there exists the opportunity so that if you can end cash by giving a solution uh, then you, your business is viable so these are all the opportunities in startup which i'm not going to read out all this uh, this is all uh, there you can see um, again grow to this bioflock also there are a lot of many videos on uh, youtube and you can see but uh, uh, hardly if he can make a viable business out of that uh, he will not be doing the videos definitely so and and uh, uh, most of the videos are misguiding so if he will be very busy doing his own thing of farming if he is very successful not training people on the youtube so that's why the reason don't fall in trap with so simply you know videos and uh, aquaculture thing on online rather than you practice it on your own you go to the farms you learn from them you talk to the farmer and also you go to the harvest site during the harvest day uh, so you will realize what is the farmer is getting from all these value chains and you have to see uh, each one in detail so these are all some of the options where you, if you want to start business i have given all of the, all of that and next slide please yeah so in any business uh, being it very very uh, you know basic you have to see this uh, simple swot analysis i have given only the examples here these these are not the exact indication there could be again contrary points some, something like competition is put here opportunity can somebody can take it as a competition can be taken as a opportunity somebody can consider it as a, as a threat so this is an excellent i have uh, got this from the hbr uh, uh, you know harvard business review so they were studying about the fish and uh, there is an excellent article on uh, aquaculture value chain which is that study is done by them and also if you can follow this matrix which is uh, elsen uh, hover matrix where if it is important or if it is urgent then you have to do it now and or else you can postpone it to later so if you follow all these uh, uh, techniques probably it will ease your business and we have a facebook group by the name aquaculture worldwide you can join that to get some of the inputs and get in touch with the industry so there is no um, not much commercial thing but you can ask your questions there as well so these are my contact coordinates 
thank you so much for the opportunity for uh, for, for giving us the opportunity for manage uh, uh, your team uh, thank you so much if you have any Simon. doubts uh, kindly shoot me your query sure sir thank you uh, mr atre for giving uh, valuable inputs related to this uh, value chain development in aquaculture uh, we will take up the questions uh, after the presentation of uh, second speaker now uh, i request uh, mr amit to introduce our uh, next speaker of the day yeah thank you praveen uh, now i welcome to our second speaker dr n intiwala neyasuddin he is the founder and ceo of shrimp care solutions sir has more than 20 years 24 years of experience in the aquaculture industry he is an aquaculture in consultant and an fwb consultant under pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana he is a sap member and ftf member also he was the part of various national and international projects in india uk japan usa saudi arabia and many multinational uh, many countries so such a renowned uh, speaker we have joined with us to discuss this topic i welcome sir and uh, request you to, to start with the session yeah good, very good morning everyone uh, so, uh, very pleasure to giving this uh, talk it's uh, so a value chain development startup in aquaculture. So very shortly, I will complete it now. Uh, this is the now it's a present situation is uh, based on the technology. Technology is very important uh, part of development towards the sustainable aquaculture. So sustainability is very important. Every pitch talk, everything is uh, uh, going to the next level. Means sustainability is very important. So that's why uh, the, the sustainability also give, link it to uh, one to one. <clears throat> so next slide. This is our company. This is our company profile logo. Uh, next, uh, simply I told uh, our company is uh, around. Uh, we are starting in 2016. Our company. So we are concentrated only for uh, technical, technical uh, development. We are concentrated about market. What is the present industry? What is the troubleshoots facing? The troubleshoots we are giving the solutions. That is our motto. Uh, after that, we are doing the uh, overseas consultancy for uh, three four countries: uh, Sri Lanka, Oman, Iran, Saudi. Like the countries, we are giving to the solutions to the farming activities. After that, we are giving the e-consultancy to the uh, Alpha and Sex at OIC, so giving the many international groups. Now we are giving the best award from national and international awards. Also, we are receiving. Next slide. Uh, after that, uh, uh, our motto is we want to develop our unique uh, so novel strengths. The solution based on our soil condition, uh, uh, we are uh, selecting the strengths from our own, uh, own strengths. Uh, uh, we are uh, produce the product for Indian condition. Uh, R&D works, we are doing our own funds. We having a own R&D funds. First we will develop, we will do the all, all our R&D works. Once completed, the product will be okay. This is uh, to rectify the troubles, uh, finalize the R&D team, then we will market the products. It's purely result-oriented products. Yeah, next slide. So innovative methods, we are uh, plan to tie up with uh, colleges and universities to develop the youngsters, upcoming generations, uh, aquaculture activities, uh, young students, BFSC, like, uh, research scholars like we are providing the services, free services to the um, uh, shrimp farming like that other man hands on training programs also we are doing. Next. This is our product simply explain as a based on troubleshoot. We are uh, examples of three. The FCR is a very important factor of the aquaculture activities. After that uh, aquaculture means it's based on uh, water. We want to maintain the water quality and soil quality in between the animal health also. So, it, um, the entire system want to manage with bioremediation system. We are not we are not we are not recommended to the using the some chemicals also. Only purely bioremediation methods. We are rectify the all troubleshoots. Example: water means uh, soil, soil probiotics, uh, water probiotics, uh, HQA, ammonia reducer, uh, then minerals. Because of that animal, uh, the animals need some minerals. So it's just close to some small system only we are doing the culture activities that low uh, very less space we are doing the more production so need extra supplements for animals so the we are producing the uh, 
selling the healthcare products. After that, new concept we are playing the industry uh, because of Vibrio and other other disease spreading is major important. But uh, value chain, uh, value chain where when where is the break of meals? Uh, the disease spreading is uh, break of the chains for. Uh, uh, aquaculture activities. So we are a special product with a disinfectant. This disinfectant for uh, use for running culture. So mostly we are not possible to using the disinfectant in running culture. It's controlled the white pickle, what are industry threats. It's one stop solution. It's controlled all even WSS we also control. We having records. Already Indian markets, this, this product available. This is our government CAA approved. The MPDA certification is there after that. Uh, Ministry of Defense using this product. It's eco-friendly and non-toxic product. The next, this is the provides our products uh, specification: water, soil, ammonia, gut, minerals. This is for uh, which we. Uh, what is the troubleshoot? The troubleshoot we give the solution. This is our concept. Next. So value value chain is uh, normally you all the things. Uh, value chain means it's a uh, production. Uh, raw material that uh, raw material processing that feed uh, that fish farming that end of the pro processing unit or uh, the market then it is the customer uh, consumer this is the value chain here when uh, we happen the small gap it will be uh, difficult to reach the consumer quality and quantity so this is the available opportunity next next slide now uh, this is the available opportunity for the PMS scheme that's our production. Uh, it's a present production uh, around 137 metric lakh, um, lakh tons in 2020. So our, our plan is 2000, uh, 220 lakh metric ton. Uh, we plan to the production another five years. Next slide. This is the investment opportunity. What are the chain? Uh, this is the value chain. This is also related with value chain. Uh, it's up. Culture, the reserve cages, mariculture, depending upon the fresh water, saline water. Uh, based on that, uh, we have a lot of opportunity in aquaculture, so ornamental fishes, bioevolving technology based aquaculture. Uh, it's supported service, aquaculture brood, brood banks. It's so very important, very important for the uh, basic criteria is the seed. So, brood does import from uh, the countries, it's uh, STF. That was unique. After that, now it's a SIBA doing a lot of work in the, in the developed. Uh, so modified genetically characters, modified uh, subroutes, which our uh, uh, work is going on for uh, indigenous, Chinese indigenous also are sort of going on. So all our nuclear breeding centers like that, uh, manufacturing unit with the proper way. Uh, other R&D works we are doing that. Uh, basically, a lot of uh, all manufacturers will be doing the uh, fish meal in the feed. But we are planning to use the concept of uh, CVs. See which extract uh, that protein will be added to the fish uh, fish feed and shrimp feed. It's uh, it's very coloration, it's animal activity, immune system. It's developed very well. It's already our R and D works already doing. So our we are uh, ready to launch the new product also. This is the other another opportunity for us. Uh, government bodies what are doing the things. Uh, next slide. Yeah, this is the uh, nuclear, nuclear building center, root stock banks, hatcheries, and that are uh, uh, rearing the ponds and the nurseries. Uh, they, they stop up a lot of uh, modification works is going on for uh, to, towards sustainable the dollar, sustainable industry and culture activities. Many species to launch the uh, marine fishes, uh, we plant tampino, gobia, group of seaweeds like that. We are, uh, we are developing, develop, development activities is going on. After that, in brackish water, the sea bass, shrimp, mud crab also is going. Uh, fresh water, uh, pangasis, tilapia, scampi, and other new species also is what is going on. So uh, there's a lot of work will be going on to the new development, uh, research and development. Next slide. And this is the value chain. It's uh, production will be increased. Compared to uh, all countries, not only for fish and fish, uh, other than seaweed also. Uh, CV also we having a lot of problems. This is the value chain. Uh, how will be government bodies will be supported? Uh, then how will be going to the step by step? This type only we will reach our production. Which in case now now we plan to another 2025 or uh, Indian production will be plan to the doubling the damage. Next. 
Yeah, this way is the value chain uh, that urban coal storage. First, we will collect the materials or the, the wild catching or uh, farm harvest material will be come to the urban coal storage, then move to the processing plant, and then retail market, urban market, like that. This is the value chain. The value additions uh, improved the product and the process supply in uh, food chain. The value uh, realization reduces the quantity and quality uh, loss. Value creations. Value creation means branded, the certification and the process and the proper value chain. Next slide. So not only for aquaculture means not only for sugar, it's a uh, seaweed also is very important. Uh, so for short also we, do, we are doing that the spirulina and other activities producing the support the value chain. So this one also it's a seaweed also is a major uh, production. And this one support for human media, human media. So other aquaculture inputs, it's very good support for the industry. They use for agar agar, uh, uh, some manure. Uh, so it's a different type of uh, things in uh, related to the food value chain. Next. So aquaculture activity is based on ornamental also. Ornamental fishes also it's related to the aquaculture. This one also he is doing a lot of uh, activities uh, related to the ornamental of uh, jewel ornamental of uh, uh, fishes. It's created a huge market. It's giving a lot of employment opportunity and the value chains also is doing a lot of works. Changes in aquaculture industries. So next, uh, next slide. Yeah, changes uh, value chain in aquaculture industry. Next. Uh, this is the concept of so when you are feeding proper everything we will manage you will capture the harvest the material it material will be want to safely we want to reach the processing plant or a, a market or the retailer end of the cons consumer want to reach the quality and quantity good uh, good quality material which means this is a valuable future next slide uh, this is this is how its uh, uh, value chain is working. The fish fish will be uh, seed. One part is hatchery, it produces the good quality of seed. Another part is feed and other inputs, aquaculture inputs like the but probiotics. It's uh, probiotics and other things uh, using the other industry it will come to the ponds. After that, uh, uh, grow out, uh, grow out. It will be culture. After that, uh, harvest. It go to the also retail and this after the processing. It, it, this start to explain simply. So primary market, secondary market, retail market, export market. Like that, want to cover the industry itself, the value chain. The next slide. Another, another it's a manpower. Manpower, how it's uh, uh, simply told. It's a gender norms, assess the control. It's a governance on power. It's a gender, uh, gender division of labor. Value chain performance with quality preparation, participation, quality participation. So quality participation is very important for the value chain. Next, so how will the, the value chain, how will the public sector's uh, response, what is the public sector responsibility and private sector responsibility? That aquaculture policy, the framework for the, uh, this is the public sector, legal uh, management work, the taxation, or the human ca capacity, uh, biosecurity control, strategic control, like the CAA, uh, fisheries department, like the rates of uh, uh, people will be uh, follow the, this norm. The private sector norms is the sustainable to the practices. This the sustainable practices we follow the protocol SOP, standard operation procedure, IS security management. Uh, what are the uh, SPF, uh, SPF seed and good quality feed, water quality management, uh, applied research, R&D, uh, R&D, which is uh, depending upon the packing density, uh, vary to it's a case to case to case. It's very it, it's just a study this type of study to move to the next level. It's sustain the industry. Next slide, next slide. This is the inputs, uh, the inputs of uh, farmers. Farmers is a wholesale, how, how it will be reached the market. Uh, the step by step, everyone having the stage, so stage having a simple profit, but uh, some uh, the directly marking to super shop and the final, final when you are reaching the final consumer, uh, its cost will be deeper. The cost, cost, cost is deeper means that is not worry. Quantity, quality of material will be planned. That, uh, that is the this graph uh, show. Next opportunities. Next slide. Uh, this is the opportunity. Aquaculture is not related to the only for fish and shrimp farming. 
it's related to the sea beach, uh, the maritime, like that, different activities. Um, this is a self help group. Uh, this is create the value chain as a producer. Uh, it will be one to one, it will create the value chain. Here also, it's a lot of uh, uh, mandatory work as well. This type of uh, works will be supported to the program on the PMS scheme and a lot of uh, funding and the DP subsidy. We have a lot of boxes going on for develop the industry in sustainable development. Uh, next stage. Yeah, next slide. Yeah, this is the, uh, after that, uh, not for the, I'm uh, talking about technology. Technology is very important for fish farming and shrimp farming, like that. Uh, before that, uh, we are using the manual feeding. Uh, this technology is out of the 180 degrees is highly successful. Uh, this technology, when you are using, we are control the FCR 1.2. Once you are control the FCR, water quality and soil quality, animal health, everything possible to control. Our uh, production cost also come down to 30%. It's a proven technology. Uh, around 400 farmers using uh, our customers. Uh, this is my own pond. Uh, I'm using uh, my R&D funds like that. Uh, this uh, this out of the It's very economically. It's reduced the uh, production cost. Like the manpower, it's reduced the manpower. Uh, it's a country. Uh, it, it's uh, depending on the, this one is uh, related to change change. Uh, change because of seed quality, water quality, soil uh, soil quality. This one also here also link the chain management. After that, the technology development for most of the 80% of the farmers now you are uh, you using uh, the soil, soil only. This is a HTB pond, liner ponds uh, with the central drainage. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah, this is the central drainage with liner ponds. Uh, once we are filling the water, we uh, always will be accumulated in the center. So, uh, human uh, only before. Uh, this type of technology using the bioflug. Bioflug is a, a semi bioflug only, it's a successful story. So, by a uh, full semi bioflug, it's not such a story. Semi bioflug is such a story. This type of is some uh, some uh, rare species, uh, some selective species only possible to do. Next slide. This is the RAS system. This is the indoor. It's a highly, it's a, this is the one time cost is high, but its the output is. Uh, it's a closed system to easy to manage us. Uh, so less water uh, exchange, uh, some uh, water, uh, water scarcity places, it's, it, it will be very useful for production for uh, shrimp and fishes also. So next. Uh, next one is aquaphonics. It's uh, related to the uh, uh, RAS system and the other system also. We have planned, we one time, uh, one, one side we will uh, do the agriculture activities. That wastewater one system. Having the fear, we grow the fishes that uh, excess water. This is using the depending upon the salinity, salinity to salinity, it varies the species. That vegetables and other things, depending upon the salinity, we plant to the cultivable. Uh, wastewater will be removed the system. It's uh, not full, uh, partial, it will remove that. Uh, uh, that uh, upstairs will pull the plants. The plants will be utilized, the ammonia and other nutrients will be leached and they grow the animal. It will be useful for. Uh, Vegetables and the uh, snacks like that. After that, fishes also parallel, parallelly grow. That uh, after treated the water again, so use the aquaculture system. No, uh, so like that. This is our uh, support for the agriculture and aquaculture. It's a parallel move. This is now developed in India also. Most of the uh, European countries and Middle, Middle East is doing uh, already started the practice. Now India also plan to do already early work is going on. We having this system also in our early works. Next. You know, they, this is the very important value chain. Value chain is not only for uh, simple things. Apart from that, a uh, lot of things is involved. And no, no, not possible to explain more time. So, uh, this is a one to one link, not a single system is not working. So, parallelly, one to all uh, work with. So, end of the estimation is the success. That success will be convert to the sustainable. So, uh, sustainable aquaculture is very important. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Renat, sir, for the uh, presentation. Uh, now uh, we will move to the next section of uh, today's webinar, that is a uh, question answer uh, session. So now we will uh, take a few questions uh, from the participants, and also I have noted down a few questions to ask for uh, both the speakers. Uh, so the, my uh, first question is uh, uh, for uh, Dr. Rinat, sir. Sir, you spoke yeah. about uh, uh, auto uh, feeder uh, container. Uh, 
for uh, yeah. fish feeding so can you uh, uh, explain about the cost about uh, this product and uh, whether this is available uh, throughout india and what is the delivery method and uh, is there any maintenance cost uh, related to that particular feeder can you please uh, throw light upon this no no yeah this is the one time cost only it's machine around 35 to 40000 is to come it's uh, possible to manage uh, inverter also no need to much more of current uh, this is uh, uh, now we are imported from uh, out of country uh, overseas now we plan to uh, in the plan to factory in delhi uh, here uh, india manufacturing this is a very simple concept so spas also very cheap that manpower in uh, that for one pound uh, or uh, five five pounds we have in uh, six numbers in this it's out of the is the means only two people is enough because if a feeder will be throw the feed the animal will be catch and move the uh, feed if feed is not waste in the frequent time every five minutes three seconds throw the feed so fcr will be come down automatically less uh, feed uh, means the water quality soil quality easy to manage okay thank you sir so we have uh, one question from uh, mr sumit kumar uh, is asking how can technological advancements will lead the aquaculture business to new opportunities it's a, i think it's a generic question any speaker can answer this uh, mr atreya would, would you like to take this how can technological advancements yeah, lead aquaculture sure. business to new opportunities there, there are so many technologies which has come up in last uh, 5 years uh, i mean aquaculture is developing really fast so can I share my screen by any chance or is there, is there any provision to do, do so? Uh, uh, is it fine if you can uh, uh, explain uh, uh, in briefly or without any slides? I mean, it, or... was in, it was in video actually. It's okay. Oh, fine. Okay. So, okay. Uh, anyway, you so can many... share that video with us, sir. We will uh, share it back with all the registered participants over email. No, the, the, there are only two minutes, three minutes, uh, two minutes, one minute, or maybe 30 seconds, a uh, lot of small, small video where I have kept all the technologies uh, and uh, other things which is happening outside and also in India. So it's, it's okay. So uh, I'm trying to explain verbally. So IoT-based technologies are coming as, uh, and even one, one of the technology what uh, my friend said, so he, it is just like throwing the feed on a regular basis, it will uh, in, uh, decrease the FCR. And again, uh, uh, feeding feed is the 60% of the entire aquaculture. Uh, so if we reduce in the feeding, and probably reduce means not under feeding also, we have to know the optimum level, how much the animal is taking when it is in uh, good condition. So if we know if we, it is not having any pathogen problem, then uh, we can give optimal feed or else uh, we have to decrease. So based on the conditions, so there are so many other technologies such as nano bubble uh, to increase the, uh, you know, DO level. Uh, dissolved oxygen level and uh, uh, recently even uh, bioflock itself is a, a technology which has come up uh, in last uh, six to seven years so where flock is being produced in the water in order to uh, consume it uh, later by the fish or shrimp so and uh, uh, yeah such kind of technologies are there so and uh, some startup companies have come up uh, along with their prebiotics probiotics uh, now uh, probiotic concept was not there 20 uh, or 30 years uh, in this value chain so now that has come up people have realized the potential of uh, probiotics uh, how it is helping in the digestion so it, it, technology means it need not to be only online so it could be uh, also in terms of uh, biotechnology so biotechnology, there are a lot of, uh, again, uh, detecting the virus uh, problem, like WSSV kits have come, and uh, uh, PCR is, again, a, a different technology, which we can, uh, uh, you know, use to prevent the losses, which can occur in aquaculture operation by detecting different uh, pathogens. So those are the things. Okay, okay, Andre, thank you. Uh, I have one question uh, for uh, Dr. Inayat, sir. Uh, sir, since uh, you have worked in uh, 
various projects in India and uh, other countries as well. So uh, just wanted to know the technology adoption rate in aquaculture industry in India compared to uh, the countries where you have done consulting projects. And uh, or what yeah, is the gap to, uh, and yeah. how we can fill it? Yeah, advanced technologies, a lot of companies will be adopted. Our system will be black up. Our people will be play, playing the pure commercial. But the Ecuador production is now it's going to high means it's that playing that technology. So comparison last year this year, uh, so uh, comparison our India, so Ecuador just production much more. He is dominant the industry. We are facing the problem because of we are facing a problem in aquaculture industry because of uh, technology play there. Simply, uh, uh, we are doing that the commercial is not possible to mention specifically uh, which area. Uh, because of a lot of people who are involved in the activities, want to self uh, awareness, um, uh, want to industry, want to sustain, then only possible to survive everyone. Because of the example I told, uh, so we are doing the here uh, commercially, we are doing the hatchery people, uh, one pair, one holders, so around 12 to 15 cycles for uh, hatching. But that technology is a five to six cycles only, after that, that brooders will be discarded. And after food industry using that, uh, not, not using the first quality or second quality, third quality raw, raw material will be using. Automatically, it's uh, create the problem that uh, competition, it's a purely competition. But we want to follow some protocols. We want to follow, but in case the price is high, we compare the other product to other product. My product is two rupees high, means but two rupees high, no compromise. But two, two rupees, we will cover other things. Like that, I want to manage every company. Then I not possible to think about pure commercial. Uh, like that, our expert uh, aquaculture people only think and want to develop the, the next stage of the industry. Okay, okay, sir. thank you. No compromise. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, sir, there is one question from uh, Mr. Sharad Pang. Uh, he is asking how to reduce the chemical use in aquaculture sector. What is the international standard of chemical usage in aquaculture? Maybe he's talking related to the uh, feeding part here. Either Atreya no, or sir, before comparison past decades, yeah, comparison past decades, now it's a chemical usage come down now uh, very rare. Some cases only using that, uh, that type of things. Now, now purely we are using that bioremediation process only. Well, before that, uh, using that chemicals, other things. Now, so the government also not recommend that. It's a very less quantity. Uh, once once discharge the water, this is the mineral. This is highly nutrient water, not chemical and uh, other things. Because of uh, soil, we treat it. Enrich the soil. Water we treat it. It's a water. It's a nutrient water. After that, uh, chemical. Once you are using the chemicals, it it will be they destroy the uh, phytoplankton, zooplankton. Entire things will be destroyed. Now technology will be improved. Now using the disinfectant for advanced technology, that is for uh, highly oxidation, uh, oxygen, oxygenated compound. Once saturation point uh, after that one saturation, all uh, bacteria, vibrio pathogens, everything will be killed. Even bacteria, viral also will be killed. That technology will be implemented. Industry is already using that type of products. So uh, nowadays, no need, no need about the chemicals. Uh, the antibiotic also very rare cases only. Your commercial thinking people only doing this type of activity. Now it's reduced, the comparison reduced. Overs is also having a more awareness. Not possible to use easily to uh, antibiotic and other chemicals. That's why we give the protocol SOP. That SOP only want to follow. Okay, okay, sir. Uh, uh, Mr. Atri, what is your take on this? Actually, there is a nodal agency in uh, India, which is the Coastal Aquaculture Authority. That is uh, that agency is screening the chemical usage patterns, and uh, they they only screen for uh, uh, no, antibiotics now. So, meaning there could be good chemical also, bad chemical also. If if I need to segregate this, for example, if you add NaCl also, you can talk that as a chemical, or probably even if you add zeolite or even that will again get into the water and you know have the uh, shape of a chemical, and this it, it will react 
in in terms of uh, increasing the water quality or decreasing the water quality that based on the prevailing culture condition or prevailing problem which is having simply nobody adds chemical to the water if it is having some problem then probably he'll go for, for example if ehp uh, is attacked to a pond then they'll go for uh, you know increasing the alkalinity to such an extent where they use uh, caustic soda in there but they need to neutralize it before that uh, if they use they cannot uh, use the culture system so again uh, for even for uh, growing the algae also you need certain chemical even uh, it is only chemically derived in the, in the hatchery but they are not harmful they enhance the quality of the water in order to uh, you know maximize the biomass inside the water for example uh, Telosocera, if you need to culture, you need to use either F2 medium or else uh, xylene medium. So if you do that chemical process only, it will come to the you know, culturing condition in, in hatchery. In, in, uh, uh, for certain ammonia absorbables, you will uh, try to manage only with the probiotics and prebiotics. That is the new concept which has come from last 10 years. And uh, comparatively, if you compare with uh, overseas aquaculture, Indian, uh, uh, so I don't want to take the names of the country, but India is doing really good uh, culture. Um, and we also manufacture a lot of uh, supplements. So that means, so we do not recommend anything to be used harmful. Uh, so it is all, uh, uh, should be safer. Then only anybody will get the business. Uh, to answer his uh, question again, uh, Global Seafood Alliance is having some uh, regulations and a responsible uh, seafood advocate uh, website is, has uh, published that data. And also, uh, th there are a lot of uh, information available on the net and uh, uh, if a manufacturing facility is there there should be some there are there is some norms he has asked about the international standard when international standard comes into the place it is i i assume it is mostly for the export purpose so when export is uh, being uh, taken taking place then you need to follow either a gmp standard or uh, has hasap standard or even uh, uh, FAMIQ US standard for European countries uh, or GMP plus. So there are uh, even halal. So, so certain standard you need to uh, manage. And those standard will not recommend using harmful chemicals into the, uh, to feed the shrimp or fish, which is later being consumed by human beings. So this is my take on this. Thank you. Hope I answered his question. Yes, yes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Dathriya. So uh, one of the participants, uh, Mr. Sumit Kumar, has raised his hand. Uh, Saurabh, please unmute Mr. Sumit Kumar so that he can ask questions to the speakers directly. Yes, uh, Mr. Sumit, can you hear us? I think uh, there is some technical issue. His end is not able to unmute. Okay, fine. So now uh, we have uh, come to the end of uh, today's webinar. Uh, I thank uh, both the speakers for uh, sparing their valuable time with us and uh, giving this insightful uh, session on uh, value chain development in uh, aquaculture. And I also thank uh, all the participants uh, listening to these uh, speakers for last uh, one hour and also asking relevant questions in the chat box. Uh, I request all the participants to check the chat box section of uh, WebEx, where we have posted the link to submit uh, the feedback on today's webinar. And also we have shared the uh, links of our all social media handles of Manage CIA, where you can follow us and get updates on all the upcoming programs of uh, our incubation center. And you also you can visit uh, the official website of Manage where you can get a, a section called recent updates. So if you visit that particular section, you will get details of uh, uh, Manage Agri Eureka 2023, uh, national level uh, agri innovation and uh, business plan challenge. So if you have any uh, innovative ideas related to agriculture and allied sectors, so you can participate in this uh, competition where we'll uh, go through mentoring and other screening process and we'll be selecting the 
eligible uh, agri startups for uh, our funding program under RK Raftar scheme. So any uh, agri startups who have products, who have uh, uh, innovative idea, which can be turned into uh, prototypes that can solve the underlying problems of agriculture and allied sectors, can apply for uh, cohort nine uh, under RK Raftar, where you will be uh, eligible to get uh, financial uh, support up to rupees 25 lakhs in the form of granting aid uh, through Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. So you can visit uh, our official website for these details. So once again, uh, uh, on behalf of Mane CIA, myself, uh, Praveen, uh, thanking uh, all the participants and also the speakers and also my fellow uh, team members who helped me to organize this uh, webinar series. Thank you again. Due to some technical error, I am not able to contact. Hello? Hello?